So what do we need? Um, simple, cheap equipment. I think it's a Vigon um, tube that you'll see here. Um, some lubricating gel does not have to be the brand um, included here, just some lubricating gel. Um, we need some local anaesthetic and the best ones we find are the proxymethacane, they're ones that we use um, in eyes, in cat's eyes, so these single use droppers are very, very useful. Um, super glue and uh, syringes and tape. So let's have a little go through uh, what we do in these patients. So measure your tube as in all these cases, to the last rib or the night, sort of around the ninth rib is um, ideal. We want this to sit in the distal esophagus. What I would do first is to place the local anaesthetic in the cat's nose. One of the issues I would say in um, placing NO tubes and people who have had less than positive experience of placing NO tubes is inadequate analgesia, um, sorry, anesthesia within the nose. Now, I am guilty of this. You put the drops in. Um, make sure you lift the cat's neck, um, head up or dog's head up so that the liquid anaesthetic really flows through the nose and I am guilty of not of being impatient here and not waiting for long enough for it to have an effect um, because it feels like forever when you really want to get that tube in and you've got another consult so leave it long enough and some people would actually say put it in twice so put the drops in leave it five minutes I put another lot of drops in both nostril and leave it another five minutes so we're going to get this tube in this cat. We want to, um, the other thing is make sure when you're applying this tube to not have your finger too far back, don't have too much floppy tube sticking out because you need um, just the end of the tube into the nose. We're going to aim it ventromedially. In fact, this, this picture I would criticise. I look as though I'm aiming it a little bit too far dorsally. So we really want to go media eventually um, and that's going to get us uh, right down um, through the back of the nose and where we want to be. Now, clearly, the problem with placing these is putting them into um, the lungs, or actually, uh, particularly in dogs, is more of an issue of meeting a dead end within the turbinates of the nose. So um, try, if you're ha having that problem, it's really usually a problem not aiming ventru medially enough. Okay, so we literally almost want to um, hold, hold the tube. My advice would be hold the tube like a dart basically, um, and sort of just dart it into the, fire it into the nose. I know that sounds really silly. The sensitive bit's going to be the turbinates and the initial bit. So kind of try and just fire it into the nose and then don't mess about, don't mess about, get it threaded. You know, don't just leave it in that initial bit of the nose because it will fall out. So, you know, try and just fire it in and then start to thread it quite rapidly. And just to prove the tolerance level. Um, this little Burmese cat um, is what a pancreatitis case from Bristol. Who I, I mean, Burmese are pretty sedate, but I wouldn't say um, this cat was necessarily the most sedate. But again, with you know, sort of, we're not scruffing this cat. We're not going in really aggressively. You can see he's he's, he's okay. Once we got past the nose, we're all right. It's just sitting there quite happily. Okay. So they'll usually swallow as you sort of pass, obviously, the back of their throat. So they'll usually do a swallow. That's encouraging, suggest you're in the right place. Um, and then you want to have, what I didn't say when we were measuring the tube, is to make sure you mark how far down you want to put the tube um, with a pen um, or even putting a little bit of bandage on the tube. So you know how far down you want to put this to that ninth rib or sort of last rib. Then the next thing to do, obviously, is to check placement. Um, and that's the most, you know, most important thing. And the thing probably that puts people off is, is sort of administering a, a meal into the lungs of this, this cat. I can assure you if we check this, check this right, um, that's not going to happen. So the first thing is to put an empty syringe onto your tube and aspirate. Um, okay. And what you should um, meet is some resistance to that because obviously what you're doing is sort of sucking the esophagus onto the, the end of the tube. If you can suck tons of air out, then you probably are in the in the lungs. So you should just be able to, you know, pull it back and, and meet a vacuum. Oh, that's the first thing. And then, which I don't think I've got a slide of, put um, a little bit of fluid down, just a couple of mils of um, sterile saline, just in case you are in the lungs. Um, and that will induce coughing if you're in the wrong place. Now, if you are, um, you know, not sure, or if the patient is anaesthetized when you're when you're placing, and certainly if the patient's anaesthetized when you're placing it, then I would take a radiograph to check. But in your conscious patients, you do not need to radiograph these if you've done thorough checking. This checking should be done before every feed. I'm sure um, no need for me to to say that. Then we secure. Um, we put these little um, butterflies, um, sort of of, of tape, on the tube where we're going to secure this to the cat's nose and the top of his or her head. Now the thing is to make sure you are sort of quite in the middle of the nose so that it's not um, in their eye line too much. I would slightly criticise this as being a little bit too much bandage and the tube being slightly in the cat's eye line. We want to try and avoid the cat's eye line here. 